Good morning. You might know there are five planets visible before dawn now. The bright one near the moon in the past few nights has been Jupiter, but Mars is up there too. And I want you to know that Earth and Mars are going to get close in 2016. Uh, Earth orbits in the third orbit around the sun. It's the blue one in the third orbit. Mars is the red planet in the fourth or orbit. And for most of the past two years, um, we've been following along behind Mars in orbit around the sun. And that's why Mars has looked so faint and inconspicuous in our sky, but that's about to change. We're going to pass between Mars and the Sun on May 22nd. And this image is from Mikhail Shubere. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He's in the Ukraine. Notice Mars on the far left here. Uh, this is the telescopic view, and Mars is tiny right now through a telescope. But now look at May 22nd. Around the time we pass between Mars and the Sun, Mars is going to look much bigger through a telescope. It's never going to look like a disk in our sky with the eye alone. It's always going to appear as a pinpoint. But um, over the coming months, if you start watching, Watching Mars now, you can see this, uh, this little pinpoint of Mars get much brighter and much redder in our sky. So um, I know that SLU also will be turning its community telescopes uh, on Mars in May for an amazing view. So this is a great time to start looking for Mars because beginning tomorrow morning and through the weekend and especially Monday morning, February 1st, the moon is going to be near Mars. So start watching the planet now with just your eye and you'll see it brighten dramatically over the coming months. We have charts and more info at earthsky.org. In other news, a study announced this week suggests that a galaxy cluster's internal structure is linked to the dark matter that surrounds it. This is the galaxy cluster A Bill 1689, and scientists say it's the first time that a property other than mass has been linked to dark matter. So they're thrilled about this. They're thrilled to what uh, they call definitive evidence of this new link. And what it means is that they have another way to study not just dark matter, but also dark energy and the large scale structure of the universe and even the very early universe. Astronomers published this image this week of what might be called the loneliest exoplanet. So this is the planet 2 mass J2126, and it's in a gigantic orbit around its star. That star is indicated here by that second arrow. So the planet lies a whopping 1 trillion kilometers, that's 0.6 million miles, uh, I'm sorry, 0.6 trillion miles from its star. That's about 7,000 times the distance between our Earth and Sun. And you know the orbit of Pluto, that very distant planet Pluto. Well, Pluto takes 248 Earth years to go around the Sun once. This planet's huge orbit makes its year 1 million years, 1 million Earth years long. And that means this lonely world has completed fewer than 50 orbits since it was formed. That's all for today. I'll leave you with a NASA video. It's hard to believe it was 30 years ago now that on January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger exploded and broke apart 73 seconds into flight. See you Monday. Going up, three engines now at 104%. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans, to share the grief that we all feel, and perhaps in that sharing to find the strength to bear our sorrow and the courage to look for the seeds of hope. Our nation's loss is first a profound personal loss to the family, the friends, and the loved ones of our shuttle astronauts. Dick, Mike, Judy, L, Ron, Greg, 
and Crystal. Your families and your country mourn your passing. We bid you goodbye. We will never forget you. May God bless you all and give you comfort in this difficult time.